Have you ever been in a cat photography session and you're having a super hard time getting their attention for their photos? Oh boy, I have a bag of tricks today to help you out. Monique here of Silverpaw Studio and founder of Pro Pet Photog. And today I have a bunch of ideas for you for when you're actually at a cat photography session and you're trying everything you possibly can to get their attention and let them have a good time uh, at the session. So I've got a bunch of tricks. You know, my thing in my studio is I want cats, dogs, whoever I'm photographing to have a good time. This is a time where they're maybe going to get treats and toys and loves and just have fun. And so I want this to be just easy for the cats. Cats are a whole different thing. Obviously, a lot of us have a, a huge percentage of our business is dog photography. And if you get a cat session, you're often stumped. What do I do? So cats are motivated by very different things than dogs. One of the big differences is like dogs don't mind, high activity, lots of people there. Cats would love to have quiet. Uh, so if you're having one of your first cat sessions, make sure you watch this other video that I have on all how to prep for your cat photography session. And then you'll be a little, you'll feel more comfortable going into it. And then with these tools as well, you will have a good cat photography session. One thing to note when you're at a cat or a dog session is sometimes these tricks will only work for one or two images. It'll be novel for just a moment. And so uh, you need to make sure the cat is right in position, like facing you if that's the picture you're going for. However you want them to be, make sure they're very close to being in position before you use any of these because then your moment could be lost. I can't tell you how many times I've put a cat in a location and it's facing completely opposite way than I want it to. And if you do any of these, all you get is the tail shot. So make sure whoop, they're facing you or however you wanted to be posed. And safety first, of course, in any of these scenarios, you'll find out pretty quick which ones are like, oh, yes, I want to come running to you. So make sure Actually, little cats like don't jump off tables and chairs and cat trees and stuff. Some of these, if you have a kitten, a lot of them will work, but the older cats who have kind of heard everything, they're going to be a little more difficult. So I always give myself a little bit more time for cat photography sessions, kind of see where they're at and um, what they respond to. The first one is what a lot of us think of is wand toys. That would be something like this. I have the magic wand Ooh, that I have made. It just has wrapping ribbon on a spoon because <laughs> it's something I can hold. And this is novel, so they don't know what is going on. So I really like wand toys and I have actually a couple of these. Um, I try not to let them get it, obviously, right? So this is staying right out of reach. So wand toys are awesome for cats. There's so many kinds. This goes on the end of a wand. It's like a little fuzzy thing and it actually has a bell. Yeah, so there's all kinds of little wand toys. Have a huge, a huge variety. <laughs> kind of going along with that, the second part of that is feather toys. Obviously we think about that a lot for kitties and there's a bunch of options for feather toys. So that's the one I have here and it has a little bell. And you can take the bell off if that's something you like. I have a couple different renditions of this. This is on one of those retractable arms so you can be farther away from them. It's a little inexpensive, I don't know if I'd <laughs> recommend this one particularly because it expands and contracts too easily. But these can be great to give you just a little bit more reach away from the kitty. <laughs> one thing I found with cats too is often I'm, <clears throat> I like to use my long lens, but sometimes I have to put a little shorter lens on so I can be closer to them unless I have an assistant. Another one is catnip. Now, what you may not know is catnip comes in two different varieties. Yes, it does. So, what I have, well, I have both, honestly, is I've got what I call clear catnip. That is my catnip spray. And I will spray this on my camera bag. I'll put it on my shoes. I will put it on um, the surfaces. Like sometimes I bring my cat table. I call it a cat table. My studio table build. You've probably seen the video here if you want to make one yourself. Um, I'll spray this on the table or the backdrop or chairs, anywhere that I think, um, they would like this. If that doesn't work, um, then I have the, you know, the little dried pieces of 
actual catnip. The problem with these though is like you have to edit it out, right? So wherever you put this kind of makes a mess and they end up rolling in it and it sticks in their whiskers. And it's not impossible to edit, but if you can get away with what I call the clear catnip, way less editing same effect. Yeah. Another trick with cats is like with dogs, they love these big sounds and squeaks and all these startling things. Cats don't care to be startled. startled. <clears throat> cats really want something softer. So I find I make little soft noises. Maybe I'm running my hands against some fabric or I'm just going. Yeah, yeah. Just like a slight kind of bird noise. And especially kittens, they like that. If it's a louder environment, which I don't recommend, <laughs> um, they don't always hear that. But uh, some cats really respond to these softer sounds. Little tiny bits of crinkling, like, you know, their treats, you can crinkle the bag. You can put your hand on the umbrella of your light and kind of crinkle that and make little noises. So everything tends to be a little quieter around kitties. You can also use the sounds app, depending on the kitty, of course, but I've got my silly sounds for dogs, but you can use that for cats too. Um, most of these are those loud startling ones, but there's one that's a bird. And there's a cricket. So some of those app sounds on that app could work for a kitty, and we've definitely tried it, especially the younger kitties. They are really interested and curious, those, that curious age. Yeah. There's a Cat Sounds app too. I just don't have one of those right now. Uh, if you have a recommendation for a Cat Sounds app, definitely, definitely type it, typey type it in the comments. Um, along the lines of toys, I have a couple different kinds. Let's see. This has a little catnip in it, but I always spray catnip on it. And then this used to have a bell in it, but sometimes they like just a little ball toy. So if you're trying to keep them on a table, you can roll this for them or they can bat this around. And this is something that's very easy to edit out typically. There's a little bit of a shaky shake in there and they're very safe. Um, so maybe find a different kind of toy that they haven't had before. A lot of my sessions are in clients' homes, so they have a lot of cat toys. So I've definitely asked them ahead of time you know, what do they have? What do they love? Uh, so we have a couple more. If you're loving this, give me a thumbs up. I'd super appreciate it. Two more. So another one is to use their bed or a comfy blanket. Cats are like, if it fits, it sits. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen all those, um, you know, social media posts where they make a little square of tape and the cat sits right in it. They, they really like that with beds and blankets too. So put their bed there, have a nice blanket ready, like a neutral blanket that doesn't distract from the kitty. Maybe spray some of that clear catnip on there and a, just a blanket folded up can go a long ways for kitties. So having their little bed or little blanket really can help them be comfortable and and let them know, oh, this is where you want me. <laughs> and this actually really helps at the shelters too. And then the last one is a box or a basket. I have a whole video I did several years ago here that was a Valentine's box. And so we just, we made a Valentine's theme box and put a little blanket in there. They love that. Mm -hmm. I've done cats and flowers and we took a, um, a kind of a wooden crate and we propped it up and had some flowers, fake flowers around it, and then a blanket in there. Every single cat loved to go in there. They're like, sure, this is cozy. I wanna just curl up in this cute little crate for you. And it can be adorable, and especially when they look so comfortable. So I always have some kind of basket or crate that I bring with me for kitties, because sometimes that's what they like too, and combined maybe with the blanket. <laughs> so, you know, just next time you're at like a craft store, look for those cute little gray wooden crates or the kind of the cream colored ones or a cute basket. And then you can put a nice blanket and towels in there and make it really comfy and some of the catnip spray. And you'll be shocked at how cute that is and how comfortable they are. Oh, I didn't even talk about treats. Oh, of course you wanna make sure that you have cat treats. Obviously there's all different kinds. This is what cats I'm finding love. Obviously not all cats are treat motivated, but these kind of pouches, Oh, they're so great. You get them in a variety pack and there's chicken and salmon and all kinds. And you just tear off the end and you give it to them kind of like a popsicle. They can have a little bit and they lick it off. And then if you have the owner or your assistant, give them a little bit and then pull away. You have a picture, give them a little bit 
pull away. And these are really, really high value type treats for kitties. This has saved my bacon <laughs> a couple of times, is having this kind of squishy treat on hand. These are awesome. Of course, you can get other types of treats for kitties, catnip treats, crunchy treats, soft treats. Uh, some clients will bring out canned tuna or canned chicken. There's uh, some cats respond to treats. So don't discount treats just because they're kitties. There are kinds that they love. You just need to be patient and find the one. All right, that is what I have for you today. If you uh, love this video, you're gonna watch, want to watch this one that's all about prepping for your cat session, getting everything in place to have a smooth session, and then you can implement all these tips. If you also photograph dogs, I've got this video for you here too. All right, thanks for watching, and as always, I wish you many woofs, purrs, and T-R-E-A-T-S's.